What up guys, this is John from Johnny Chaps Media. Uh, I'm in the process of putting together a car pewter for my uh, 2004 F-150. This will go right here. And uh, I want to show you the hardware, everything I got going on right now before I install it and put it in. Take you through step by step on this. Uh, we'll go over what I got so far right now. I got the, the actual brains of the computer. The uh, the case, I don't know the name of it, but it is a uh, small case picked up off of uh, eBay. And uh, on the back of this, I just put the stickers that came with the motherboard. The motherboard is the Intel D510MO. And uh, this is it right here. As you can see from the case, it's really small, which is real nice. Uh, it doesn't take up a lot of room. Uh, not a lot of stuff you can fit in there. I pretty much got it full. The uh, case came with the two fans and uh, then the bracket for the hard drive. Uh, what I've done is put the motherboard in. I put it in, it's a 250 gigabyte laptop hard drive. Let me set it there. This little guy. And then uh, powering that, I got the M3. MX, I believe is the name of it. I don't remember off the top of my head. I'll give you a link. Uh, but what this is pretty neat. Uh, I'll go over what I like about it, and then I'll give you the flaws on it. Uh, you see, it has a red, black, and white wire. Of course, the red and the black are your positive and negative, and the white is the ignition wire. It tells it when to turn on. Uh, right now, since I'm inside, I've got it running to a little power converter, 12 volt. But I just run the positive and negative to it, and then uh, I just run another little wire off of the positive to act as the uh, ignition switch to connect that to the white wire, but we'll do that in a second. And then it has leads that come off and then power your uh, hard drive into whatever else you need. I guess a uh, DVD drive or whatever, but as you can see that wouldn't fit in there, so what I did is I got a uh, USB DVD case here. I figured I might mount that on my console or something, but uh, yeah, that just runs off USB. Real neat. I don't have that connected right now. Uh, and then uh, also, for other things, I have this uh, wireless USB keyboard with touchpad. It's real nice. It also has a uh, laser pointer on it. It's made for more like presentations and stuff, but worse than my, what I'm using it for. And uh, for right now, I got the wireless G Belkin uh, for internet. I had gotten this uh, mini PCI card until for some reason I couldn't get it to work on the system, so I have to get something different or figure that out. Uh, and then I have the two USBs coming off to the 7 inch touchscreen MIMO monitor, which I mounted. Uh, I had gotten this off eBay, another uh, console that goes on the truck. Uh, I didn't want to mess, take a chance of messing up the other one. So I bought that and then uh, put the monitor on there. Uh, kind of custom fitter in there. Seems to be all right. But I was thinking maybe of uh, putting that DVD case down here or something. This all this was was 12 volt uh, socket. So I cut that out and then uh, put some black plastic on there, or whatever, and then mount the case on there. Uh, but this is a screen. Uh, getting back to uh, to the uh, actual DC DC power unit here. It works real good. It gets a signal from the ignition switch, turns on the computer, and uh, turns on the screen. The thing I don't like about it, though, is uh, there's only a couple settings you can you can do. Uh, right here, it has little jumper leads that you can put on it. And then uh, when I got this off eBay, it didn't come with any of these. I had to rob from something else I had. But anyways, you can set it up so it times at different intervals. Uh, so like right now, for example, I got so that when the truck turn the key off on the truck, it waits five minutes and then puts the computer into uh, into hibernate, and then after two hours, it shuts it down. Now that's the most extreme, the farthest it can go as far as like time-wise goes. So I could turn the truck off, get out, and then two hours come back, and it'll, you know, it'll wake up from hibernation. You can go down to like a five seconds after you turn the key off it, it goes into hibernation and then a minute after that it shuts the computer down to conserve battery because uh, what it does 
shuts off the 12 volt, turns the computer off, or uh, acts as a power switch. And so right now it's connected to the power switch lead of the motherboard so that when you turn the ignition off, it sends a pul off pulse signal uh, to your motherboard to do whatever it is you have it set up to do, whether it be sleep, uh, hibernate, power off. And then after, when it does that, there's still five volts going through here. So after a predetermined time, it will uh, it'll shut that off so you're not wasting your battery. Uh, so right now it's like two hours. It's just the whole, it's just the whole computer off. Uh, the reason I don't like that is you know how long it takes computers to start up. So anytime you get in a car and you turn on, you know, you, you crank up your car, your computer is going to reboot. And it's going to take anywhere from a minute to two minutes, depending on what system you have and what you have installed, things like that. It varies for each person. Um, I don't really like that. I like to hit the power button and put the system into standby or sleep, if you will. So that way if you hit the power button again, it automatically wakes back up right there. It takes two seconds. Now the problem with that is that, you know, it'll drain your battery over time. Uh, but I drive my car enough at least once a day to where I don't think that would really bother it. And then if I were to go somewhere and not be able to drive my truck for a while, then I could just turn it off for good and then come back when I use it again, turn it back on. Can't do that with, with this. Uh, so I might have to try work around on it. Another thing that it has is you see this green wire coming out of here. It's the uh, anti-thump for your amplifier. I have right over here Pioneer 1000 watt amplifier that I'm going to be using to run the speakers in the truck because I'm going to be running Sirius satellite through here. Uh, whenever you turn your computer on, if you don't have your uh, amp connected to this, it's going to get you're going to get that loud thump as soon as the power turns on. This will go straight to the uh, uh, the keyless or whatever the ignition for your uh, amp. So see right here, I got you know your positive, your negative, and then your system controller. That would be coming from your radio normally, but now this wire acts as that, so this wire will go to that. So this will cause a delay. Uh, so this will this will boot up, and then you know two or three second delay, it'll turn the amplifier on. That way you don't get that loud pop. So that's kind of neat, but uh, anyways, that uh, pretty much sums that up. You know, I'm not covering it in software or anything like that. And I'll, I'll do a little write up on that. This is just the hardware, but I do want to show you what happens when you do apply power. Right now, I got positive and negative connected. Uh, converter is on. So pretty much, this is just like if it were in your car right now. Your car's off. Uh, you're inside. You're in grocery store or whatever. Uh, car's off, emissions turned off, but let me show you what happens when you connect uh, the leads here. I'll set this down for a second, and then I'll connect the two. So I'm just putting the ignition into there. So now, I saw the blue light come on, booting up. So you see, I put the ignition wire on there into the white, so that's just like you turn the key on your car. You see the more of the board lit up, blue lights on, and the fans are running. On the screen, the uh, blue power light is on. Now, pretty much we're waiting for it to boot up. And uh, you'll see, this kind of takes a few minutes. So yeah, so, yeah, I'm just imagining uh, getting in the car ready to take off and turn the car on, and this is what I'm waiting on. So it's not like your regular radio starting up. Uh, while this is starting, I just wanted to uh, cover some about USB uh, screens. I've read a lot prior to doing this that you couldn't use a USB screen as your primary uh, monitor. I found out that you can. Uh, here's the only problem with that. Uh, as you can see, there's nothing on the screen. So while it's still doing the BIOS setup and booting up, the driver for the screen isn't loaded yet. So it's not showing anything. So if I were to get an error message, say the computer shut down, uh, do the hard shutdown without going through the whole process and you get that, you know, Windows just shut down. Do you want to recover in safe mode or whatever? I wouldn't be able to see that. Uh, so that's one downfall. All right, there it is. So I didn't count how long that was. It's about a minute, between a minute and a minute, 30 seconds. But uh, as soon as the computer boots up and loads that, 
the driver for the USB screen that pops up and then I have automatically to start centrifuge centrifuge so centrifuge will start automatically and then I have it set to go straight to the Sirius screen I don't have Sirius connected yet I'll show, I'll show you that later but yeah that's that seesaw um, that's the only downfall on this whole setup uh, I have a little workaround when I was talking about that screen uh, when you do the BIOS when that's setting up and uh, maybe it says do you want to start normally you know or start in safe mode if you were to shut your, your computer shut down prematurely if you will uh, with this keyboard the USB keyboard still works that'll still work during the USB or the BIOS setup before it actually loads the driver so if I find that this is taking too long if I know it's like a minute 30 seconds or whatever and it's taking longer than that and I've actually done this and it worked I just hit enter on this well, whatever you know it's probably un might be unsafe because you don't really know what it is you're hitting enter and for but I did and I guess it, that's what that screen was but then it just popped up uh, yes yeah, so that's the only downfall of having a USB screen but yeah that's touch screen so I have the keyboard for typing and stuff I need to and then uh, for just normal driving applications I have uh, touch screen so uh, yeah that's that um, that's pretty much everything on this right now I'll keep you up to date on the install and then uh, do a little thing on programs or whatever but uh, hope you enjoyed if you have any questions leave me a comment let me know all right later guys